Hey everybody, welcome to Two One and Stun. I'm Ryan Stukjelna. And I'm Philip Two One Shelna. And today we are here to talk about Well, I'm not entirely sure because I haven't really thought about it until I turn on the microphone. But it must be about martial arts. It must be about martial arts. The people have spoken or haven't spoken because of because <laughs> the episodes we post that don't have anything to do with martial arts are exceedingly lower than the ones where we do. So, you know, your apathy speaks large volumes. <laughs> but anyway, Dad. What I want to know is, uh, in the last episode, we touched a little bit upon, like, hey, you ever use martial arts to try to impress chicks and stuff like that? But, uh, you know, you gave me a little bit of a vague answer, but Phil Jalna was once a teenager. And, uh, you know, you were a shy adult, so I can't imagine how shy you were as an uh, adolescent. I'm even shy talking to you. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Dad, uh, when, when's the first time you ever kiss a girl? Martial arts. <laughs> a martial arts girl? <laughs> yeah, yeah, martial arts based. The funny thing is that when you actually think back, because I've never actually thought of when did anybody, when did I ever kiss anybody that had something to do with martial arts, because you always think that you're projecting this like totally like pure human nature, and you realize that it's only later you realize that you were probably just faking it and stuff like that, and then you were actually trying to get whatever kiss you got, you know, to totally from trying to be this cool guy that you're not. It's kind of funny. I don't, I don't recall you ever uh, or me ever asking for love advice because I come from a TV generation. So I was... <laughs> you were plenty supplied, supplied by the TV shows you watch. Yeah, yeah I, 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 w I came from the generation of let's watch a Doug Funny screw up Patty Mayonnaise and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> See, Patty Mayonnaise actually sounds like a pretty wild chick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess who just came in the gym? It's Mitch. Hey Mitch, I call I call him Ninja Mitch because you know you know he acts like a ninja. Mitch, I'm gonna start a passion project. I want to make a cool Green Hornet movie. You want to be my Kato? Sure. Awesome. Hey, take a seat, Mitch. We don't have a show, and you'll fill the void. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. Now, Mitch, you're athletic and good looking. What do you look for in a chick that knows martial arts? You know, what kind of skill does she have to be like? You know, flexible. <laughs> have you ever um actually have you ever met any ladies through martial arts uh yeah but i'll they'll stay anonymous for several reasons <laughs> that i wish to not elaborate on <laughs> one one time we were in las vegas and uh mitch was talking there's this really very attractive girl uh in uh, this place we was called, we were in, a, in a, one of those hotels that has an abc store abc store is like a hawaiian store well um like a 7-eleven but only in, in hawaii or this this particular hotel and I, this girl was chatting him up and but you know mitch is a good looking guy so that you know it's not unexpected and so uh, mitch is like taking a bait saying oh well yeah so uh, when are you free later and so she goes i'm never free <laughs> 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 what <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I have to pay for her services. <laughs> oh. The best part, though, was that years before, we went down to... I'm so innocent. I'm just like, oh, she must be really busy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she, we were in Las Vegas years before that, and uh, we were walking along the Strip, and, you know, as would have it, you know, it was hot, we'd been drinking, or drinking um, soft drinks, and we decided we all had to go uh, to the can, so we went, we found a men's washerwoman. Some of us waited outside and some of us didn't. And Mitch was very hot, you know, and uh, what happened is he took off his shirt and these security guys came along and they started acting in a really strange way because we were just like a bunch of guys hanging out together, walking along the strip in Las Vegas on a Saturday afternoon where it was like, you know, a million and a half degrees outside. And so these guys were going, they started acting really strangely to us and it was like, and it was weird because it was like, what? What are they? Why are they saying stupid stuff like that? And it turns out that you know, he, see, Mitch was so cute that they thought he was a male prostitute, and he was he was hustling somebody, and he was like, what? What? N no, you know. But it was just funny because you know that I guess when you get when you do that kind of work because it's funny because Mitch now is involved in you know, this, uh, the retail side of security and he must run into people and he had must make, have to make the same kind of, you know, well, you know, sometimes not deserved evaluations of people. 
So it's uh, it's just funny that uh, you know we did. We were just sitting there going. It was one of those like like. Oh, you know what they think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. So, how long have you been in our gym there, Mitch? Uh, I've been here now. Go, uh, this July uh, will be sev- uh, will be sixteen years. Sixteen years. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah. You know, pe- people have had professional careers. In which they die <laughs> before 16 years goes by. So that's 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 really amazing. What would you say is your uh, one of your favorite things about this gym in particular? Let's say the new location. Uh, well, I I mean, this is one thing I could say I really love about the gym is the is the the attitude of everybody. I mean, we have so many disciplines. Uh, you know, Sifu Phil has so much experience over so many years of training, uh, but there's no animosity towards like between between different groups. There's you know, it's it's really like a family environment and. Everybody's here to help everybody, and, and that's what I really appreciate about the gym the most. And of course, uh, Sifu Phil, who's been there for me, has been kind of like my martial art father that I didn't have ever since uh, you know ever since I met him in well ever since I re met him when I was 17 years old because he knew me before, but I I didn't know because <laughs> I was too young. You know something amazing, and um, forgive me, I think uh, if I get this name wrong, I am so sorry if you ever hear this. <laughs> I I believe it's the name is Sean, but I was at a I was at a Halloween party. And I was approached by this guy named Sean saying that he is your friend and he was with you when you first came to Gamma. You were, you, you brought a friend with you and you're trying to bring up the nerve and he came with you and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, that's uh, I, I think you're talking about a, a good friend of mine, a, a friend I met. Since, well, I've known him since about 60, 15, 16 years old, Sean McGoldrick. Oh, I was right. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you were spot on. He, uh, it wasn't Sean of the Dead. <laughs> no, not Sean of the Dead. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I don't see him as much dead these days. He's really busy with school and work and family, as you know, everybody is. Uh, but um, I remember when my mom, when I asked you know about my father, I said, you know, mom, who, you know, you know, what did dad do? And she told me, well, Kedja Kembo, uh, go see uh, Philip Jolinas or Roy Buchanan. And, you know, I searched on the internet. Phil's name popped up. Uh, you know, I, I called my buddy. I said, hey, Sean, you know, I'm going to go meet, you know, a guy that trained with my father. Do you want to come with me? I'm a little nervous. He came with me and then, you know, the rest is history. Oh, wow. So that, that, that's, that's a lovely story. Now, now you're part of the family. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> because, uh, you get, so tell us some stories about how you went up to the Kaji Kembo conference during your birthday. And <laughs> you guys, um, you were uh, trying to hold it together. The, and the next day after a night of, of Vegas fun. Well, um, as well as Sifu Phil knows, uh, every every conference. Well, for, since I started going with him, uh, I noticed that the conference was always the weekend or the week of my birthday. <laughs> and now I've never been to Las Vegas before, and I mean, uh, the first time was actually probably the the funnest and scariest at the same time because I you know I wanted to go compete. To, you know, see who Phil's telling me, Mitch, you know, you should compete. To, it's something, it's a great experience for you. I'm like, okay, great. So we went down there. We went with a couple other uh, black belts, uh, Dorian and uh, Kingsley. And uh, we decided, you know, have a couple drinks. Now, Dorian, if you know him, he doesn't really drink. His wife till this day is still mad at me because I think she mentioned that he probably drank two or three times in his life and I was one of those times. <laughs> <laughs> and she wasn't. <laughs> um, so we had, uh, you know, needless to say, we he had... wouldn't uh, even toast at the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, we had a couple drinks too many, and I remember. Uh, I mean, it was really funny because I mean, I was I was young. I was maybe about twenty years old, and uh, I, I, I the next day I really I couldn't do anything. But that evening I was staying with Phil, and I remember going into the hotel room. He's already asleep, but he's not snoring. He's not. I'm like okay, and he's like and he was awake. He said, "Mitch, are, are are you competing tomorrow?" And I said, "I drank too much." And then there was just silence. He didn't say anything. I didn't sleep for four hours. <laughs> but uh, every, out of shame, yeah, out of fear. <laughs> um, but I have to say that every every time I go down there, you know, it's a great experience. But you know, for the most most part, um, it's like a vacation slash also martial art. You know, uh, you know, training, martial art improvement. And uh, but every single time we go down there, we always seem to drink. And uh, for the most part, every time I'm supposed to compete or ref. I'm not doing so well the next day. So uh, that's because of my birthday. And every time I go and I tell people it's my birthday, well, you can imagine how Vegas is. It's this, they say it's the city of sin, right? Whatever stays in Ve- whatever you know happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, of course, unless it's venereal disease, but you know what I mean. <laughs> that's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, so it's uh, every year's you know every year's a, a great experience. It's a lot of fun, a lot of learning, um, and then a lot of partying. You know, and I, that that just goes hand in hand with the with the place. 
Do you think you've had a handle a little bit more on the partying and you're a little bit more like less useless <laughs> when it comes to the day of? Yeah, 100%. Well, just because, I mean, I know my limits more. And I mean, I've been there. I, I've gone with Phil maybe six or seven times now. So it's, it's I mean, f- the first couple of years, it was always about fun, 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 fun. Now we'll have some fun. But the next day, it's, you know, it's, it's no problem. I'm okay. Yeah, but nowadays, you see, last last time they went, they went to see a bunch of comedians that they didn't get, they wanted to see, and that they were, they were, you know, they were there, available to be seen. So sometimes you have to think about things like that because uh, you know if you if you have to you know partition out your your entertainment dollar and your entertainment hour. Sometimes you can wait in Las Vegas in a bar for something to happen, and it never does. You know, you're you're always there long enough for you to regret not having spent more time doing something else, but you're never there long enough to say to yourself, oh, okay, I've, I've done everything I wanted to do. So it's really important to you know, to know what you want to do and then go and do it. Basically, not to heck with everybody, but okay, I'm going to do it. If you want to come, here I'm going. Bye. Because I remember, the, the I think the year before you guys went to see that, uh, all those comedians, the year before, you could have gone and you didn't go. Yeah. And it was like, why didn't we go? I don't know. Wow, why we we should have gone, right? Yeah, we should have gone. But we we didn't go, right? No, we didn't go. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, the year before we wanted to go see Eddie Griffin and uh it's exactly what you said. We actually waited for sir, for some more of our friends, but when the day they got there, uh his shows were already sold out. So we were, we said to ourselves, the next year we go if he's in town, we're getting tickets right away. We're going and it, that doesn't matter. And that's exactly what we did the following year. All right. You're always learning. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the student shall someday become the master. Well, one of, one of the funny things, when you have a, one of the events, especially the Catch a Gimbo event, you have people coming from all over. You have people coming from Hawaii and the Pacific Northwest and uh, California coast and Texas and, well, we come from Montreal and other people could be, they, they, people coming from all over and um, sometimes Grandmaster Lim has some of his students coming from Europe over there. So uh, that we had some people from Spain one year, we had uh, people from Puerto Rico. I mean, they're just people from all over, Kajigimbo practitioners from all over. The problem is that when that happens, everybody likes to think that their techniques should work when they're fighting in a tournament. And most of the time, they do. The problem is that whoever the judges are, sometimes they, they, they don't think they're being biased, but they inadvertently become that way. I remember years ago, I was at a tournament, a similar tournament in uh, Oakland, California. It was in the old days where it was before the, the KSDI ter, uh, seminars and uh, get gatherings got together. It was with the old IKA, the old International Country Kobo Association. And I remember fighting in a tournament and you'd do something and you knew this is something that you would do fairly regularly. I was an okay fighter in those days. I mean, I would, I'd win. I had a bunch of trophies, so I knew that this wasn't an accident. And you score on these guys and then the referees look at you like you're like, what? And then because you, if you happen to face somebody that they know, who's well-known, you can't be, I don't know who you are, you can't be as good as my favorite guy over there. But so, I punched him in the face. Well, yeah, His or, blood is all over me. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty much like that. And that's a problem because, you know, then uh, there was one time we were at a tournament and there was two very strong schools and they were basically competing for, I guess, bragging rights. And anyway, so there was, some guys were there, and all they were there for was to sit, to complain about how the other referee was ripping them off. Oh, we always get ripped off. Oh, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. And it would be like a Greek chorus. It was hilarious. Because the other guys were doing exactly the same thing. It was both sides were whining. Ah, oh, they're not giving us the points we thought we should have. And so it was. It was funny. The whatever team won, won. But it was. Uh, you just start realizing that, you know, the the biggest problem for most martial arts or any other or any other uh, sporting event is the politics because local favorites are local favorites, and you know you you hear from you hear about it from people. And people say, I don't understand why didn't you know our guy who always scores that point when he when he tried scoring that point and he succeeded, the other guy didn't see them, and you start realizing that. You know that it's, you know it's a really big problem. It's gonna and it's gonna continue to be one. Do you have any experiences like that where you're doing it and you're like, um, I that's a point, and they didn't give it to me. Well, I mean, uh, the- is this because you think I'm a hooker? <laughs> <laughs> the 
let's not let's not talk about that story anymore. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I've, oh, I mean, I understand I, exactly what you know. Sifu Phil is talking about. You know, I've I've seen countless times, and he's he's absolutely right when it comes to the politics. I mean, I myself one year when I competed, um, I mean, I was I mean, I'm fairly green in the the point fighting um, industry, and I mean, obviously, I was nervous, and you know, for me, it was it was something new. So I went through it, and I think I was fighting for third place because I had lost to the the guy who was going to fight for second and first and so we were fighting we were both that we were both at equal points the next point won okay and what happened was uh, he jumped he jumped on me to try to hit me and he just slightly touched my head but when I hit him he flew maybe two meters three meters away now it was interesting because uh, after that you know he came up to me shook my hand and you know I could sense that he felt like I was the winner but of course exactly what Phil was talking about because you know they're so used to seeing this group of guys and they've never seen me before and who am I I'm the only lonely you know brown belt at that time uh, so you know they gave him the point and he won but you know at the end of the day I'm really I can, if there's one thing I can say I, I take from that is I don't care so much about that because it's, it's tag. Uh, for me, it's really, it's, it's the, it's what Phil impressed upon me when it comes to fighting, when it comes to self-defense, you know, it's either you're all in or you're out. And I remember fighting this one, this guy, the same guy, uh, point previous, he touched me and ran away and turned his back to me, you know, and I could have, I could have put him out, but I didn't. You know, and I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm happy and I'm grateful for the training I receive. And, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, in terms of the politics and the rest, well, I don't even really care. <laughs> so, yeah. When it comes to the internal politics and just voting for who you know, this is the most random reference in the world. But it, I recall, like, Saturday Night Fever is all based <laughs> on this one competition. And they totally, Travolta and his girl get schooled by these Spanish people. And the Spanish people, like, are eons above them and even Travolta knows and stuff like that and like you know he gets awarded the point anyway but the whole point of the movie is he's like he gives them he gives them the trophy he's just like I didn't deserve this and then and then his brother jumped off a bridge I don't know I don't know that that, that, that part has nothing to do with it so you know he didn't jump off a bridge or no one you knew did so that's good <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. like I said you know the, again it's it's not so much the I mean you're we're always gonna see that you're always gonna see favoritism you're it's I mean it's part of it's part of every uh, you know especially when it comes down to competition and we see in every different competition there's always uh, there's always controversy but at the end of the day you know it's what do you take away from it for me it's what I take away is you know the 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 persistence since the hard work, the tenacity, the the going all in, and you know, because I mean, if you don't go all in, then you, you, what do you you know what do you want? You know, it's in a self defense situation. You get put in a situation where it's life or death. You don't go all in while well, you're dead. You know, so that's something that Phil impressed on us, and he continues to impress on us. So that's I could just say that's one thing I, I greatly appreciate. It's very funny because I, I'm, as he was talking, I remember a, a tournament that your father actually was running back in uh, the day. We should really give a little bit. Of Midge's father was dad's teacher, and we haven't said this so far, and this is kind of important. So we pulled a Tarantino where we uh, put the beginning of the story somewhere in the middle, possibly near the end. Anyway, yeah, well, that, his father uh, had the nickname of Cato. He was Alexander Polentin. He was a martial artist originally from California, moved to uh, Montreal around 1967. And uh, I met him around 1971, and uh, started training with him officially in 73. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, but I did a bunch of training with him before, but I officially uh, changed schools at that time. But the, we had a tournament that we was at the old high school of Montreal before it became transformed into FACE. And uh, it was funny because we were in a tournament, I was in a tournament and I was fighting this one guy that I knew pretty well. And we had an exchange and I don't know what happened, but I hit the floor with my head and I was knocked for a loop, but I didn't go unconscious. So I got back up. I, I turned to, I, I'm only imagining this because this is what people told me because I have no memory of this. I went and then I beat the guy. My mom also said that, I think she was referring to yeah. this experience where yeah. she's just like, Phil, are you okay? He's like, yeah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it was funny. I was like, I looked at this trophy I had gotten, and I was like, what's this for? <laughs> <laughs> Whose trophy is this? And I I'd had a mini concussion, and I would, like, literally, I'd whacked my head. It was a hardwood floor. It was bang on the floor. But around, around the same, on the same day, there were a bunch of people that had come from different schools to fight, and uh, I was sparring with this one kid, and he did a round kick, 
and or no, I did a round kick, and he blocked it cleanly. I mean, it was like it was like, and the guys in the ring who actually happened to be black belts of ours, you know, were giving me the point, and it was like, that was no point. What are you talking about? I said, I, I didn't get it, and their comment to me was, shh, we always get ripped off. Just take it. It's one for us this time. It was like, you know that, but that's really the lamest thing, you know. And some people say, yeah, but you know, but really. It's not like, oh, I'm such a big sportsman, I believe in sportsmanship. But if you're working really hard, the last thing you want to have is somebody who hasn't ever worked hard for anything decide what it is going to be. I mean, you want, if you're going to run a race, like most of the time, whenever you have people who, who are just doing stuff together, the time and energy you put in, the, the work you put in to achieve, that's far more important than, than you know, the, the, the very, very transitional nature of a, of a piece of tin or plastic because that's all it is. It's not much more than it. It's not like, oh, well, here, let me give you, you know, this World Cup. It's not a World Cup. It's a tournament that nobody will remember. Most of the time, you don't even remember. I mean, I remember when I threw away all my trophies, I couldn't remember exactly what any of them were for. I remember like an injury. I remember one tournament I got. I was fighting for first and second place and the guy kicked me and I... My, my finger got dislocated. So what I did, my most memorable thing was putting the finger back into, you know, like, like putting it back in so that I could bend it properly rather than having, it, having my finger point in the wrong direction. And then I beat the guy. And then at that point, my finger swole up to be the size of a baseball bat. So it was like, I couldn't bend it anyway. Mm. But it was, uh, yeah, it was literally facing up, you know, like my hand would be here and my finger was up this way. So I was like, "Oh, yeah, disgusting." <laughs> any any uh, any comments or boo boos, Mitch, that you'd like to tell? Uh, from from training, uh, I mean, the the majority of my my injuries came from dancing. I used to I used to I mean, as Phil knows, I used to break dance, and yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a term unto itself, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but from from class, no, I actually I, I can't say that I, I received any very serious injuries. But I can say that it it saved me from a very serious injury uh, when I was about 20, 20, 20 years old, uh, about three years into Kejikembo. And I mean, the guys that we were training with back then, I was maybe one hundred twenty pounds, and everyone's like six foot two, two hundred and something pounds, and they're they're all monstrosities. Uh, the body conditioning was tough; it was really hard. Uh, but you know, lo and behold, what happened was one evening I was out with friends, and you know, we got jump by about 15 people and they I don't know I got knocked out cold right away but they were literally jumping on my head uh, when I was in the hospital the doctor told my mom I had about a 50% chance of living now of course I was high on drugs but I was like no of course I'll be fine um, but what had happened <laughs> but what it <laughs> feigned shock feigned <laughs> but what I have to say that um, I mean, I, I did have a headache for uh, quite some time, but I healed very quickly. The, even the doctors were surprised how fast the swe swelling in my brain went down. And I, I have to credit that to, to martial arts. I have to credit that to training with Phil because if there's one thing I did, I did many years of kung fu and tai chi and you know, other things when I was younger, but I never really knew what it was to get hit. And the minute I start, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I start to, to, to do body tempering and to do body conditioning and to train and to hit each other, I have to, have to say that uh, when I got jumped by those 15 people, I believe that if it wasn't for the hard training I went through the years, you know, leading up to that with Phil, I, I probably would have died. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm here, so <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a fine story to go out on, folks. When people are jumping on your head. <laughs> about when you fell off the fence. Well, yeah, but that, but I wasn't attacked by 15 people. I was attacked by gravity. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping it martial arts based, damn it. Oh, gravity. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. When all the folks out at home there are listening to this and feeling like they're about to vomit, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good way to go home. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for listening to Two On and Son. I'm Ryan Sikshelna. And I'm Two On Film Show. And special guest, Mitch. <laughs> Mitch, uh, Mitch, not the prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the prostitute. No, no. Mitch, you don't have to turn on a red light. <laughs> you just have to fight your 15 guys. Mitch. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to learn how to heal better, you can come down to Gamma. That's 514-281-9928-1117 St. Catherine. Mitch, uh, what classes can people find you in? 
Uh, you can find me in the Kendrick Kemble class. Uh, they're usually held Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 5.30 to 7. Uh, yeah, come down and uh, let's have some fun. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next time.